Jackson, Officer Jackson, move those prisoners. Officer Benton, kitchen's a staff. Officer Townsend, those rocks ain't gonna break themselves. What are you standing there for? Get moving. What are you looking at? Go on, get moving. You, you, you with the hammer, and you, you'll do. We need to perform a work detail out in Rhodes. Come on, get in. Open the gate. Come on, Milliken. Yeah! I tell you what, old Jameson is a wretched, sour old bastard, and no mistake. You lot stay calm in there. We weren't saying nothing. Well, you are now. Shut up. You know, my wife has acquired ideas significantly above her station. She's been reading too many goddamn books. Personally, I'm against education. Of women, I mean. And men, I guess. Unnecessary. Doesn't add much to the world. Education. Good day, gentlemen. Oh, don't do anything stupid. Nobody gets shot. Act like fools, and the pair of you will be dead within a minute. Now, what are your names? Jenkins and Milliken. Well, Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Milliken, throw your guns to the ground and get on down here. That's it. I'm very glad to meet you. It's not worth being rash. You boys get paid a salary. You get that salary whether these people escape or not. Your wives presumably want you alive. Let them out. Now, please. Okay. Okay. You all run away. Aside from you. Try to stay out of trouble. This is a stroke of good fortune for all of you. Use it. Now, Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Milliken. Be so kind as to uh, quickly run away before somebody gets shot entirely unnecessarily. Go on, don't look back. Mr. Went, I believe it was $50 we agreed on. It was? Here's 50 each. Each? Yes. Now get out of here, both of you. My employer and I appreciate your professionalism. All we did was stand there and look tough. And you did it fantastically well. Good day, gentlemen. Now, ma'am, how about you pick up these guns and we move out? My mistress is waiting for us. Madam, we're back. Hello. Jessica Leclerc, how do you do? What did you tell her? Nothing, as we discussed. Thank you, Hawley. I do hope we haven't inconvenienced you dreadfully. But seeing as you were due to be hanged in a week, I'm sure you don't object too strongly. I know you're innocent. Well, <laughs> not perhaps exactly innocent, but not guilty of what you were accused. I know you and those who were with you that died were little more than patsies, and that you were set up by one of three men or a woman, possibly by all of them. I can't be sure, but that is all I know so far. And one of these people also made Mrs. Leclerc a widow. And I will avenge my husband's death, so help me God. But I will not avenge it upon them who did not cause it, or caused it unwittingly. Anyway, I'm sure this is all a touch confusing and melodramatic. Uh, where are my manners? 
Holy, please show our guests to their tent and give them some fresh clothes to put on. Very good, madam. Then serve us both a little refreshment. Certainly, madam. This way. You'll find a change of clothes in there, alongside a few other items you might need, a lasso, a knife, and a lantern, I believe. That looks more comfortable. Holly? Here, madam. Your very good health. I suppose it beats dying, hmm? Mrs. Leclerc's husband was murdered by one of his business partners. And I intend to find out which one. Or rather, I intend for you to find out and kill them. You're the only person I could possibly trust to do whatever it takes. Because you and your accomplices, 
you're the only other victims of their lies still alive. You see, you walked into the town at approximately the same time my husband was shot in the back, but by another gun, firing different bullets to those you possessed when you were arrested. These bullets. This was their mistake. You were rounded up and sentenced to death, all because you came to town and didn't talk too much and seemed like you were nasty. Anyway, here they are. The people who run Blackwater. Mr. Jeremiah Shaw, banker, real estate speculator, and crook. Mr. Amos Lansing, ranch owner, speculator, and crook. Mrs. Grace Lansing, his wife, society patroness, lover of the arts, crook, and my former best friend. Teddy Brown, her disgraced brother, outlaw, wanted man, and still in contact with them. All I ask of you is your help in finding out quite what happened. Mrs. LeClerc would like to help you get back on your feet. Get back to work. Whatever your work may be, I don't judge. You want to rob? Rob. You want to save innocent folk? Do that as well. But you need me just as much as I need you. I think we all understand each other. I hope we do. Good. I look forward to rewarding you for killing those who made me a widow. My husband was a true believer in this country and in the West. He was killed for greed. Foul greed when there's quite enough for everybody. I don't care what your scruples are as to killing. I will take the full burden of that sin upon my shoulders. Goodbye, for now. Then, Hawley, go introduce her to nice Mr. Cripps. I think you'll like Cripps well enough. He's long past his prime, of course, but uh, he hasn't gone entirely crazy just yet. And he will help you better than most of his ilk. Cripps! <clears throat> Get up! Oh, hello, partner. Hawley? <laughs> this is your new boss. Oh, pleased to meet you, partner. J.B. Cripps at your service. We'll pay to get your camp established. Mrs. LeClerc is a generous benefactor. And, uh, where are we headed? Oh, and, uh, madam, while Cripps is establishing your camp, perhaps you can go to the station and see the clerk, then head to see Clay Davies. He's a horse thief and, uh, not a terribly nice one. Then meet Cripps back at your camp. See you shortly, boss. Good luck. You, uh, you must be a Horley's friend. He's one of us. He said you are also a discouraged creature. Now, I will be honest. I try not to talk too much to women. I, well, let's leave that. Alden, that's me. But Horley insisted you was okay. I'm very discouraged, you see. Anyway, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, sort of. I find your reticence charming. Real charming. <laughs> I heard you might want to earn a little extra money. Well, some gentlemen have been robbing our stages, and they are not part of the club, if you catch my meaning. If you can make them go away, I'm sure they will have something of interest to you. They're up at Blue Water Marsh. See what you can do, okay?
Here, by the way, a catalog. The latest issue just came into this armpit from a land more civilized. And if things work out, well, my colleagues and I move around these stations as needed. And all of us are very discouraged. We will all help you with pertinent information, even if you are a lady. Good afternoon, ma'am. You're about to leave. You don't leave. I'll enjoy making you.
Come on, don't forgive. I'm gonna cut you to You ain't gonna be remembered. Not like us. Raider's gonna put a goddamn end to you!
and again. <laughs> Did Hortley send you, Pop? I'm Clay Davies. This is my brother. Clive. He don't talk. Maybe you two will get along better. <laughs> Maybe not. Listen, I heard you wanted to earn some money. So, there's a gang of ne'er-do-wells. They are a bunch of degenerates, not good people. They're out in roads with a bunch of horses they stole off of me. <laughs> well, that's a lie, but they stole them off a fella I was gonna steal them off of. <laughs> Maybe you could get them for me. You think you could do that for me, Pop? Oh, look. Here are your friends. Well, good. Meet me at the stable at San Denis once you have the horse flesh, and I'll pay you good. Oh, and Pop, Horley wanted me to remind you any decent work you can find, take it. But just try to stay out of trouble. Oh, and once you give me those horses, well, after that, we'll talk again. Oh, I do so enjoy these conversations. I'm used to them on account of my brother. Let's go, Clive. right about you dead right ain't that dandy get that horse hidden away clive and ready to move out as soon as we can all right here's the money you earned now listen horley came by and gave me a message he said to go see your friend crips up at your camp now listen to me for a second any other decent horses you find we'll buy them just as soon as we are set up okay nice meeting you you know what Hold on, boy. I call him boy because I'm older. 30 minutes, he went black. <laughs> Let's give our friend here back the horse. It's yours. A sign of faith and future business. If you want to buy any extras or sundries for the animal, head inside. They've got a lot available. See you soon. <laughs> Come on, Clive. How do you get on with Clay Davies? Horrible little wretch, in my opinion. Pop this and pop that. I'd like to pop him, a slime bucket. <laughs> anyway, I've got everything set up. Well, uh, what we have so far, uh, place is pretty nice. I uh, think you did a good job for you. I'll earn my keep. When you get too old to fight, what choice have you got? It's either work or beg. And I'd rather work. Oh, uh, I saw uh, Horley. Now, he wants you to come down and meet him in Blackwater when you get a chance. I think he might have some work for you. Oh, and uh, uh, while you're out on your travels, you may see some folk with uh, employment opportunities. Good folk, bad folk, looking for a tough guy with a gun to help him. Up to you if you uh, listen to him. 
I guess. Uh, you know, I, I used to like that kind of stuff. Uh, one time, I almost helped a clown steal an elephant. <laughs> but that's a very silly story. Welcome home. Make yourself at home. It is your home.